I thought he started off on the wrong, on the right foot on that issue. It is 100%. Uh, 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 no, 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 not here. I'm sorry, sir. Do not boo. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the ladies of The View giving Tim Scott a lecture on what it's like to be a black man in America. That's right. All female panel, no black men. Hey, Tim Scott, you do not know what it's like to be a black man in America, or at least that's what I heard. Now, if you don't know who Tim Scott is, he is a Republican senator from South Carolina, a black male, and he's running for president right now in 2024. Now, I think it would be an uphill battle against Trump and DeSantis, but that's not even the point. Right now, he's out there on the campaign trail. He's doing quite a bit of interviews and media appearances, and he stopped by The View. Now, The View is an openly hostile place against anybody conservative. They say they have a conservative on there, Anna Navarro and somebody else, but Anna Navarro is the textbook definition of a rhino, Republican in name only, Okay, it might as well be a 100% liberal female panel. Daytime talk at that. So you're getting this complete babble on there that I drive you insane. Now, before we go any further into it, let's roll some clips. I will link to the full interview in the box. I know they try to do copyrights and whatnot, so I can't play the whole thing here. But after we get done, I'm going to give my two cents and I get my two cents throughout. If you want to see it in full without my commentary, like I said, links as always will be in the description box. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. And you are the first black senator elected in the South since the Reconstruction. That would be about, I think, about 114 years. Yet you say that your life disproves uh, left leftist lies. And, and yes. my question to you is, I'm the exception, right? You're the exception. Maybe even Miss Whoopi Goldberg is the exception. Oh, she's but, definitely the but, exception. But we are not the rule. <laughs> and so when it comes to racial inequality, it persists in, in five core aspects of life in the U.S. Economics, education, health care, criminal justice, and housing. At nearly every turn, these achievements were fought, threatened, and erased, most often by white violence. You have indicated that you don't believe in systemic racism. What is your definition of systemic racism? Before he says anything, there is a lot I want to say in response to what she says. So let's let him talk. Then I'm going to talk. Yes. Answer the uh, question that you've answered. Does asked it it. Or does it even exist yeah. in your mind? Let me, let me uh, answer the question this way. One of the things I think about and one of the reasons why I'm on the show is because of the comments that were made, frankly, on this show, that the only way for a young African-American kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule. That is a dangerous, offensive, disgusting message to send to our young people today, that the only way to succeed is by being the exception. I will tell you that if my life is the exception, uh, I can't imagine. But, but, I can't but it imagine, is. But it's not, actually. Here's, here's, it's been here's 114 my, years. Yeah, so, so the fact of the matter is we've had an African-American president, African-American uh, vice president. We've had two African-Americans to be secretaries of the state. So let's, let's pause right there before they get into the Fox commentary. Um, <laughs> there is so much. Where do I begin? I hate the whole thing about, oh, you're the exception. Oh, ABO, you came from the hood. You came from... Uh, no money. Now you're successful. You're the exception. I'm the exception. Why? You want to dig into that? It's because I'm black. So being black makes you just inferior inherently and you have to overcome your inherent inferiority. Is is that what I'm hearing? I mean, if it was a white person with a hood in the rope that said something like that, you would just say that he's racist and it'd be racist. So it doesn't matter who says it. It's still a racist thing. Okay. You got people that come from other countries, Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, et cetera, come here to the U.S. with no money, with nothing, and then they become very successful. It's all about skills. What do you have to bring to the table? What do you have to bring to this country to contribute, to innovate? Like, what can you do? That's the most important thing, all right? And if you're able to do something that is found valuable, you'll be successful, if you're not acting the fool, carrying on, committing crime, then you have a better life. It's not difficult to understand. You being black, white, Puerto Rican candy stripe is not going to be a deterrent or a hindrance. That's just not what it is in America. Now, if you go over to some third world country and you're living in the caste system, that's different. But that's not America. 
It's just not. So this whole thing about race and you can't do anything and you're going to be inferior and you're the exception if you become successful. If you're black, it's racist. It's bogus. I hate that message. And what are you to tell little kids in the hood coming up? Okay, they, they got their, their mom and their dad, the papa, the mima, the brother and sister. And you tell them, hey, you know what? You're black, so you won't be anything when you grow up unless you just win the luck of the draw or the roll of the dice. I mean, what are we going to tell our kids? You're going to bake into them an inherent inferiority complex that they can't do anything, that they can't succeed. That is a ridiculous message to send. And like I said, it's racist on top of that. It doesn't matter who it comes from. And speaking about who it comes from, what's going on with Asuncion, a.k.a. Sunny, hosting all of a sudden now being this strong black woman, you know, talking like Angela Davis, all this kind of stuff. You might as well put that um, that weave ponytail into a bit crazy 1975 Pam Greer Afro, okay? The way you talking, you are Latina some of the times and black some of the times, you know? Now, I'm not saying you got to be either or, but you want to lean into either identity whenever it benefits you. I think that's bogus and corny, but I digress. Let's keep on going here. Comments throughout his time there on The View. It was phenomenal what Senator Scott did. He came locked and loaded with facts. Mm -hmm. He came across good-natured, charming, but strong. Uh, he went on to say, just after that clip, not only have we had a black president, currently black vice president, he said, I have a black police chief in my community. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, before she gets into all these accolades about black folks, which I'll touch on in a minute, what's going on right here with all this, this hugging and carrying on? Like, what is this all about? Is this the, the, the sisterhood? Am I seeing the sisterhood on television? I don't know, but I digress. I don't particularly care about, okay, you the first black, this first black, that, whoop, whoop, whoop. okay, that's great. That's, that's fantastic, phenomenal. But does it really matter? Does it? I, I don't really think that it does because at the end of the day, I'm more of an individual kind of person. You know, I try to do for the community or whatever. But really, at the end of the day, the best way for you to advance the community or community is to do well on your own, to do well by your family. So I'm not really worried about the first black this, the first black that. It doesn't really matter. Okay, what are you going to do for yourself and for your family? When you look in the mirror, what do you see? When you go outside every day, what are you doing to make the world a better place and to make your own life better? That's what matters. Not, oh, you're the first black female LGBT, five foot 11, uh, trash compactor operator specialist in the state of South Dakota. Who cares? Black head of highway patrol. There are black men and women. See what I'm saying? Highway patrol. Who? Why does it even? I'm getting triggered. So let me keep on moving. Let's see if there's more footage that we are going to get into. Oh, okay, here we go. I think State Disney is the radical left. Well, I'm talking about. No, but do you think Disney's radical left? Well, I think Disney and Ron have been in a combat zone for a number of months over what I thought was the right issue as it relates to our young kids and what they're being indoctrinated with. I thought he started off on the, wrong, on the right foot on that issue. It is uh, 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 no, 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 not here. I'm sorry, sir. Do not boo. This is the view. We accept we don't have to believe everything yeah. people say. Now, but to get, to get back to this, to get back to the whole thing about the booing and whatnot, Whoopi Goldberg stepping in, I think she did that because he's black, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm being racist myself, but she didn't want to see him get, like, totally abused on the show like they do everybody else. If that's Ron DeSantis, if that's Trump, I, I, I don't know if she does that. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't know if she does that. And quite frankly, the audience did that because they felt comfortable in this space to do it because... Their whole thing is about hating the right. Left, 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 left. They love the left. So whenever you come on as a conservative person, they're going to automatically be hostile. They've been trained to do it. Like a, they're like a crowd of trained seals. Okay, you throw a fish out there, they clap in, oink it and everything else. That's kind of what they do out there at The View. That's why they did that. All right? And then they go back to what um, the whole question was, which was about Disney and being far left. Well, you know what? I'm not sure if Disney, the corporation, is far left. Maybe they are. I'm not really sure about that. Um, but I think some things that they support are far left. Like, I don't know, transitioning little kids. I don't think a, 
I, you know, I, I think a five-year-old being put on puberty blockers and hormone blockers and getting physical cosmetic surgery to quote unquote change their gender. I think that might be a far leftist principle, but what do I know? I'm a guy on the internet talking. I'm the exception. I'm black. I don't know anything, right? That's what they want to say on the view and the most 95% white female audience, but I'm getting triggered. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there. Of course, there's more from this particular interview and I will link to the full thing in the description box for your viewing pleasure. But as I close, I'm going to say this. Shout out to Tim Scott for going on The View and being cool, calm, collected, not getting triggered, not getting frazzled. Because some people, they might go on a platform like that and get offended and want to lash out. But he was cool, calm, collected. I, I like what he did. Now, um, as far as him being president, I think it's a long shot. Because again, you got the two main guys. I don't think anybody could really breach that. It's a lot of good people out there. You got, um, which, uh, uh, I don't want to say nobody's name. I don't want to give, you know, I don't want to say that and miss somebody. But there are people out there who are trying to run. I don't think anybody has a true chance other than Trump and DeSantis. It'd be between the two of them in the primary. I think it'd make for an entertaining pool when you're talking about the, the debates and whatnot during the primary season. Hopefully there's a debate on the left as well, but I don't think there will be. They're going to run the old dilapidated jalopy called Joe Biden till the wheels fall completely off. And by looking at it, the wheel about to be off right now. The axle is pretty much bent in at a 45 degree angle. So the wheels are going to be next. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about Tim Scott's appearance on The View? How do you feel, how do you feel about The View and their questions and things that they were saying, their statements, whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. Um, the far left or the left in general that you see on television, uh, on the the view and other shows like it, they're racist, uh, point blank. They think that they are the opposite of racist, but they're not. When you tell black folks or any other quote unquote minority group, you can't make it. Or if you do make it, you're the exception. That is a racist thing to say. Anybody can make it in America. All you got to do is have hard work. It's it's really just that simple. It don't matter what color you are. This ain't 1910. Um, Even back then, you could still make it, but I don't want to get too far into it. My whole point is that this is not some third world, backwater, banana republic. They're trying to make it be like that, but we're not quite that way right now. You come to America, you could do whatever you want to do, be whatever you want to be. That's the reality. But whatever your thoughts are, Please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.